Welcome back to Some Offense Intended. I'm Jeremy Robinson. I'm Mike Mike. And today I we tried to get uh Wasatch pumpkin, Wasatch, however the fuck you want to pronounce it. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's amazing. And I stopped at Lee's Discount Liquor and asked if they had the variety pack for like October, November, like the pumpkin variety pack of Wasatch. And he looked at me like I spoke a different language. He goes, a what? Well, you had two heads when you asked him. So that's I was like, the, what? Well, Wasatch, yeah. I was like, what? Wasatch, Wasatch. However, I'm like, however you want to pronounce it. And it's in Utah. And he's like, he's like, oh, let me look it up. So he's got his little like tells on thing. He's like, I've never heard of that. What? I'm like they have really good beer, bro. They do. Yeah. I'm like, I, I, don't, I was just gonna say I don't know how a Lee's discount liquor doesn't have them. So he looked it up and he's like, Okay, well, we might have something over like in this area. And they did. They had one, it was like I don't remember what it was. It was like off ciders or it was something weird that I hadn't heard of from the company. And then next to it was like they had a spot for Wasatch Apricot, Wasatch Devastator, which is really fucking good. It's like a it's a double buck lager. It's like nine or eleven percent. Like it's heavy. I've seen it. It's, it's good. Yeah. It's heavy. Like don't drink a six pack by yourself. Heavy. Because unless be, you're staying in, you'll be fucked up. If you're, um, if you're if you're planning to go someplace, don't do it. If you're yeah. staying in, do what you want. Yeah. <laughs> um. So they didn't have. I'm like, okay. Well, he's like, yeah. Like if if you like want it, want it. Like we can get your information up at the register and then like try to get them ordered and this and that. I'm like, okay. So, like, after I got, I ended up getting, these are uh, Belching Beaver Peanut Butter Milk Stout. I, I love the name. And uh, I also got a New Belgian Christmas Ale. It says it tastes like cranberry spice and everything nice. I don't I don't want beer to taste like um, Christmas. I don't, I'm curious to see. If, I'm not a Christmas fan, Well, though. the tea that I started making at work yeah. tastes like fucking Christmas. Yeah. I'm I'm curious. I don't know how that's a selling point to people. I'm it's amazing. I don't like the I don't want things to taste like Christmas, but I don't like Christmas, so But you agree that the tea smells good. Uh, it's yeah. Okay. Okay, <laughs> lawyered. So I'm curious to see what an actual company thinks Christmas tastes like. Because I have obviously a massive repertoire of flavors in my head that yeah. represent either I don't at special occasions, holidays, random fucking things, whatever they might be. I want to know what other people think certain things taste like. All right. So I'm excited to try it. I think I took them out of the freezer so they won't blow up. Um, so these are the peanut butter milk stout. If I can get this open. Peanut butter milk stout. Here's yours. Yep. Fucking reaching over these things. We need to get new mic stands again. Smells like peanut butter. I would hope so. So we, we were talking about TikTok before we started the episode, and I wanted to mention uh, I had a uh, I have a TikTok account, and I was logged out of it on my phone. I went on my tablet, and I couldn't remember what I had used to log into it. So I ended up with a second TikTok account. That smells really good. It does. But um, my second TikTok account was just on my tablet, and then my regular one I got back on my phone. And I I watched a few videos on it, put a couple things on there. Then I didn't do anything with it for a long time. Right. Then a couple of months ago, I looked on it. And it's like, um, we cannot verify your age. If you don't do this, this, and this, we're going to close your account. I'm like, oh no. Okay, go ahead. I closed it. <laughs> I closed out the app, and I went on to my business. Last time I went back, apparently, and they weren't bluffing. They closed the account. Huh. Well, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> It definitely tastes peanut buttery. Oh, definitely. That's pretty fucking good. I like peanut butter. That's I like it a lot. Yeah, I know you like peanut butter, so I got these for you. I'm walking around the grocery store, and they were on sale. It's a Reese's Puffs Complete Peanut Butter Pancake Kit. That's awesome. And I figured you couldn't use one, so. Thank you. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I got gotcha you three. Thank you. I saw those downstairs and I was like, what is that? Are those pancakes? And now I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> comes with uh, comes with the pancake mix, cereal topping, which would be Reese's Puffs. Yes. Yeah, it has like a little like drug baggie of fucking Coke of Reese's Puffs. 
Uh, and then it says just add water or milk. It's made with mini Reese's peanut butter chips. Perfect. Yeah, I would imagine that's going to be fucking great. I kept one. So you got three, I get one. Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah. And then I also got more tequila, but since we're having a beer and Mike's driving after this, we're, yeah. we'll not do a shot of tequila. Not this week, but next week. Yeah. It'll still be here because I'm leaving tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so I found one thing that I thought was super curious to talk about. Um, where is my fucking notes? There it is. So this just goes to show the whole like art is whatever people make it to be. And it's basically just a way to fucking launder money and just rip off people. Yeah. And like, oh, well, this one's worth more. So there was, I think this was back in like 2019, but they just did a, another article on it. $26 million painting heading to the Louvre after being found in elderly women's kitchen. Why the fuck 20... anything like that in my kitchen? Yeah. So... An elderly French woman had quite the surprise when she found out a painting in her kitchen dates back to the 13th century. The painting called The Mocking of Christ was created by Italian artist Simabu, Simabue, I don't fuck, whatever, and was not discovered until appraisers came to the woman's house in Compiègne, France in 2019. The woman thought the rare artwork was a Greek religious icon, according to multiple reports. Now, four years after its discovery, the painting is headed to the Louvre. Oh, so... The article's new. It's just taken them four years to be like, oh, yeah, this should be in a museum. Um, yeah, if you find something like that in my possession and I own it, um, it's not just going to go to a museum. It's going to cost you. Oh, that, I'm getting <laughs> to that part. Apparently, it, it did sell. She sold it at an auction. Um, now it's heading to the Louvre Museum in Paris. The painting dates back to 1280 and sold for 24.2 million euros, $26.8 million dollars at an auction in October of 2019. However, the French government stepped in to block its export, assigned the painting as a national treasure, which kept it in the country for 30 months. There's why it took forever. Oh. Fucking somebody bought something, private party, at an auction, which I guess it might not be private party at that point, but you buy it through a fucking auction. Well, usually you would be uh, an anonymous bidder. You don't want everybody to know what you're buying. And you spend 26, almost $27 million yeah. for the government to say, mm, no, no, I don't think so. Not for two and a half years though. Like maybe, I don't know. We'll think about it. We'll get back to you in two and a half years. Imagine that. Oh, that would piss me off. Spend all that money. <clears throat> and now it has, now it goes to me. What about the guy with the, who bought it or the woman, whoever bought it? The stall gave the government enough time to raise funds to buy it for the nation. Imagine fucking taxpayer dollars going to buy a fucking painting that was in this lady's kitchen that probably has grease stains on it now. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, she probably cooked it right up, right? It was probably right above her stove, too. Well, I mean, <laughs> if it was if it was originally like oil grease paints, that would, that would look right at home. Yeah. Uh, it says, in the 1280s, the derision of Christ became an exception on the artistic scene and positioned itself at the forefront of Western painting. The Louvre said in a news release, this work allows us to take a new look at the artist who for the first time abandoned the Greek manner, that is to say Byzantine, opening the way for a renaissance of Western painting. The painting helps complete part of its collection and will join the Simabue painting Maista, according to the president and director of the Louvre Museum, Lawrence Descartes. Uh, he also added the painting is a crucial milestone in art history, marking the fascinating transition from icon to painting. Both works will be displayed as part of an exhibition event in spring of 2025. So I, it makes me wonder, is, is, did they, did somebody say, Hey, you should probably check out this painting at that house. That's, that's what I was curious about too. Cause, cause it, I mean, I doubt they were just dropping by. Hey, well, do you have any artwork you want yeah, to It appraise? says appraisers came to her house, yeah. like came into her kitchen. So either she was doing like antiques roadshow shit and was like, Oh, I have this chair and walked them past this painting to look at a chair. And they were like, this chair is Ikea circa five years ago no but how about this painting we want to know about this like that could have happened like stuff like that does happen or it could have been um 
somebody she knows was like this, has a friend who's yeah. an appraiser and they stop by and they're like holy shit yeah let me take a look at that or one of her friends yeah. is like a super art because i don't artsy. think appraisers just stop by people's houses randomly no. and go, hey do you have any art you want me to look at yeah no that's i'm <laughs> that might be a great business door-to-door -door appraising yeah i bet you could make some good fucking sales I mean, it's all based off of like the appraiser and values and this and that and whatever. And then it's not a lot, a lot of work to do an appraisal, but you can charge. I'll have to think about that. Well, that might be a fucking great business. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but I was just thinking, you know, in, in France, maybe just artwork is just so prevalent that they have to go and appraise houses in houses all the time. Well, it's, I think it would be like she had a friend that was that was super artsy and is like, this reminds me of something from blah. Or one of her friends was admiring it like, oh. and being like, you know what this signature in the bottom looks like? It looks like this Simabu guy. Maybe you should look it up because the fucking signature says Simabu. Yeah. So it, it, I think it might have been that one. Could have been. Like yeah. somebody came over that just went to a fucking art gallery and was like, oh, I saw this signature that looked exactly like the one in your kitchen. Somebody out in front had a sign that said, Willow praise for food, and she brought him in yeah. to the kitchen to feed him. <laughs> and he happened to see it. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, that, that, it's common, yeah. So uh, It's common. I don't know that I would say that. <laughs> That's the comedy of it. Mike, um, Mike will appraise for food. <laughs> um, I have no certifications or authority to appraise, so any appraisals you get from me. I didn't me, say it would be official. I, it's, I'm just saying, yeah, it will, probably won't be official. Yeah. Um, and so, I don't want anything spicy, so. <laughs> speaking of official, um, it'll be definitely be by the time this one comes out. I don't, I've been saying that fucking several times, but now we have, what, like 25 clips? Yeah. All cut up and... And labeled and i'll probably mix them up and start throwing them scheduling them on uh facebook instagram tiktok youtube and people will be able to watch short clips yep and we'll see i don't know how many i don't know how far in advance you can schedule i would imagine pretty far yeah because i want to schedule like two a day for now because with so episode 36 was the first video episode this is episode 76 so it's easy numbers. There's 40. Yeah. And if we get like 10 or 12 per episode, that is 480. Is that right? Yeah. That's a lot. Well, we want to get ourselves out there. Is that that, that math right? Wait, what was numbers again? 40 times 12. That's 480. Pretty yeah. sure. It's not going to change. Yeah. Jesus Christ, that's a fucking lot. Yeah. Okay, well, good, yeah, we have like the thir the first 30, and it was only like three episodes, so I guess that fucking makes sense. Yeah, well, plus we, we do have a lot of content. Yeah. Right. Um, And that'll, that'll boost it even more, which I've also seen, I don't know how I feel about it, I'll have to see, I guess, how the stats go with running the shorts, is I've seen a lot of, a lot of channels do, and it might be like a monetization option also of like joe like Santagato studios does it also where they have uh they have the basement yard mm -hmm. account that does shorts and the full videos yeah and they have Santagato studios and like one or two other ones like one is like the basement yard shorts or like they have ones dedicated to doing that i think because it gets shared so much and it gets viewed so much that it creates jesus i'm hitting the microphone all day today but it creates a second like monetized account because it's still going to get just the same amount of views yeah. as the other one. So why not double up on it? So we'll have to see how the stats run and maybe make a second account for just the shorts Yeah. also, and then just fucking slam all that. Cause I kind of want to figure out how to do some offense intended studios. Yeah. I kind of want to figure out how to do, uh, the full videos on Facebook without having to like try to embed the YouTube. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if we would have to do a live or if you can upload the video or I don't, I've, I haven't looked at it. Cause I think that would be, I think Facebook, just like 
most of the social medias do is like if if you record a video on TikTok, TikTok will boost videos made on TikTok more than they will boost ones like made on Instagram or YouTube or whatever and cross shared across it. So I'm not sure how that will work with Facebook and shit, but I'm sure they do something similar. Yeah. So that'll be a, a learning thing. <laughs> it's then, all a learning thing. We're yeah. still pretty new at this. Well, that's also like, but listening to so many different podcasts and like I'm listening to a fuckload of Grant Cardone's podcasts for like business, real estate, finance stuff. Yeah. And it's very comforting to me because of how many audio issues and video issues and everything we had at the beginning. Yeah. And like we, I feel like we've gotten ironed out pretty fucking well. Yeah. Of, I think right now I'm close to like episode 500 on Cardone's. Because I skipped through it and like added my own, I built my own playlist of it to only listen to the real estate ones. Um, there's often that the audio will cut out. Like not often, often, but yeah. more often than it fucking should be. Of like they'll be talking and then just, just you don't hear anything. Mm -hmm. And it's not like sometimes it's for a phone in, which I understand. Like phone shit can be frustrating, but yeah. most of the time it's it's grants microphone that cuts out and he's the main guy on that podcast so that and then like listening through the basement yard i think it was like episode 200 like somewhere around episode 200 or 300 yeah. there was like 15 minutes of dead air at the end of the episode damn yeah and i even i commented on the youtube video i was like hey you might want to check this out on spotify because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm like it's a little bit here, a little bit there, but it's sometimes I'm listening to it. It'd be like, I can barely hear them. Yeah. Which, I mean, we had a couple episodes like that of yeah. where the, the mic levels weren't fucking phenomenal, but but like, I'll they, barely hear they, them and then I'll play like music and it'll be like, Holy shit. Yeah. That's, that was actually the next episode that I was uploading to, uh, to do the, the AI reels. The name of it was the no intro outro music ever because I can't stand that shit. They'll be whispering, and then just here comes fucking blaring music. It's literally in my ear. Yeah. Because I have my earbuds on when I'm listening yeah. to it most of the time. Yeah, and that's movies. I've, I'm so tired of movies that do that, too. Like, that's part of the sound director's job is to, like, even out, like, level out the fucking sound. Yeah. Like, obviously, if you have explosions or if you have something that's, like, right up against the camera, you can have it louder. But you want it to be pretty evil, even, like, leveled out sound so that when people are talking, it doesn't sound like they're talking from back here. And then, bam. Yeah. Yeah, it drives me nuts. Because you, it's a whole long dialogue scene. You turn up the fucking volume, crank it, crank it, crank it, crank it, crank it. And then here comes a fucking plane just dropping bombs. And just explodes your whole living room because you turn it up so loud. Or just you can't hear the conversation. And then they start talking loud. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't I don't need that. I, I want it to be I want to be able to hear it. Even if they're whispering, I need to be able to hear it. That might be one of my biggest pet peeves with movies. Um the the dialogue shouldn't be a secret. You shouldn't be whispering so the people watching can't hear it. Well that's I'm also glad that I run closed caption most of the time because Often, closed caption isn't subtitled from the recording. Mm -hmm. It's subtitled from the script. Oh, nice. So, like, if you're watching something that's dubbed, like it's originally in French, and here you go, here's, here it is in English, the subtitles will often be a cleaner translation of what was supposed to be said mm -hmm. versus, well, it didn't sound right, so we had to change it, and the English voice actors said this. So it can get a better idea across that way. But also sometimes like if it's super quiet or like maybe they had to shoot this scene eight times and they forgot to include this last little bit of it'll still say on the closed caption on the subtitles, the line that was supposed to be said that might not have gotten recorded. So, you know, something was supposed to go there. Well, what about if you're watching something that's say it came out in the theater and had language that they don't put on certain TV channels? Does it? And they dub in other words instead of. I have no idea. 
Uh, I was just curious, maybe if if when you're reading the subtitles today, I mean, uh, yeah, if it actually showed the word that was supposed to be there, because sometimes they change it because they don't I, have. I think it does. And sometimes um, it completely changes the meaning of the sentence. Oh yeah, and it's like that is just awful. Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple that are interchangeable. Like I don't give a damn. I don't give a shit. I don't give a fuck. Those are all interchangeable in that one sentence. Yes. But if you change the sentence, often a lot of it changes. Yeah. Well, sometimes they'll change one word, and then it's like you change it to something that does not mean the same thing at all. Yeah. And you're like, that's not, that doesn't work there. I can't decide if I like this chair. I like that I can sit up straight, but yeah. there's no armrest, comfortable, nothing. I don't know. Well, um, I, I did want to go over something I, I ran across yesterday. Apparently, in it, your car or just yeah, yeah. It, okay, I, I I put it in the trunk. <laughs> I don't think it's moving anymore. <laughs> no, um, I was I was watching something yesterday, and they were talking about in New York, they've taken out things like like benches in certain places, like they have like um one of the train stations. The the new train station they have no benches in it. There's no place to sit down. People sleep on them too much. Yeah, and they they refer to this as hostile architecture, also known as defensive architecture. Like there was places where you could sit down in the terminal, but they were in like the restaurants and the places where you know you have to spend money to be in there. Huh. And people are upset. Then they had these benches where they put um, notches, so if you try to lay down on it, it's going to oh. be very uncomfortable. They do that all all the time too to to keep people from like skateboarding and like grinding on benches. Yeah, like stupid notch things that are everywhere. Yeah, but they also um like they had a, a you know the vents for the subways that they you see. Yeah. Well, they they put things there so people wouldn't sit on those anymore too. So they made them uncomfortable to sit on. But which that one kind of sucks because hot air comes out of there in the winter. It gets cold. Jesus Christ. But um, imagine you have a restaurant and you you've paid a lot of money. I mean, if you're in this term, it, it costs like a billion dollars for this this station. You have a restaurant in there. Do you want people sleeping across the hall from your restaurant? I mean, I mean no. That's not the, the image you want for for your eatery. Well, no, but it's. I don't think it should be on the restaurants. I mean, or the train station, for that matter. Like, it should be on, on the city, just like San Francisco. Well, the city's the ones who built it, and they're the ones who put the no. Yeah. And I mean, But they also want to keep people moving. They don't want people to clutter the place and sit there. They want to have open space because there's a lot of people coming in and out of there all the time. Well, sure, but, like, look at San Francisco. Of Like, they didn't give a fuck how much shit and needles and trash were literally everywhere in the streets hmm. until... Chinese Jin Jinping or whatever the fuck his name was came and visited like Newsom's grandpa or yeah. fucking uncle bad touch or whatever the fuck he is to him. <laughs> the, the bribe guy for Newsom. Yeah. And <clears throat> Newsom basically said, yeah, yeah, I did. I did clean up. Was it you that told me that it was like, if you have guests over at your house, are you not going to clean up too? And that's what Newsom said. Yeah. I'm like I understand that. Like there's a difference between, like cleaning up a little bit and having a stage four hoarders fucking mansion and then doing a complete clean sweep. You remember that show on clean. HGTV clean sweep? Yeah. Yeah. Doing a complete clean sweep of the entire fucking thing so that you can do a communist f welcome to this dictator. You, did you see the parade? I did not. Bro. Like Chinese flags fucking everywhere lining the entire like the entire area that they paraded him through wow. of I want to say it was like 12 or 15 black SUVs in front and like and cops and everything. Mm -hmm. And then like the car he was in and then like 12 to 15 behind him and like blasting the Chinese national anthem. If they have one, I don't know. It was something. Everybody. Yeah, they have one. Um, And then like doing a bunch of shit. And it was like and here's uh. Here's where the U.S. president went to China and had his parade or like whatever they called it. And it was like three cars in front. It was three cop cars in front. And then like a Lincoln SUV 
and then three cop cars. Oh, we have to outdo them. And no American flags. Like one of the issues that a lot of people had with it was like there was a couple American flags around when all the Chinese flags and stuff were up for that. Mm-hmm. And the Chinese flags were higher than all of the American flags. Damn. Well, the thing, um, why did Newsom have them in his state anyway? He's a state government. Yeah. Why, why is he inviting in countries? Because China supplied most of everything to Frisco and LA, like to California during COVID. Yeah. Like almost all the, the government funding that went through Cali to buy shit. He made, he made deals with China to get all of the equipment and supplies. It's just normally when, when other countries visit our country, they visit our uh, national government, yeah. not our state level government. So that's just. That's the other weird part is that kind of tells you how, uh, how crooked some stuff is. Yeah. Just like, and I still can't fucking believe it. They had a, a vote to recall Newsom. And. They had the vote. Did he pass a law to let Chinese vote? (laughs) They had a vote. And then like, it was within 30 minutes of the polls closing. They had the answer. It was like, nope, it wasn't enough. They didn't have to verify. They didn't have to recount anything. They like almost immediately knew. Okay. Well, voting's done. Nope. I'm staying in office. Like that's a little sketchy, bro. I remember when that happened. Did it? It didn't take 15 fucking minutes for you to figure this out. Like, that's weird. Nobody had an issue. Like, nobody forgot to hit enter. It's not like it's a small state. Nobody sent it. Nobody forgot to that's send the email. That's a lot of ballots. And not all of California is a big city. A yeah. lot of it is rural. And you, it, I'm guessing that not all of them have the same technology yeah. when it comes like, to voting. That's, you're telling me this, that was what it was super weird. I didn't understand. I'm like, if I lived in California, I would be pissed. Pissed. Pissed off. Yeah. Finally got enough votes to recall him, to have a recall vote. There was finally enough signatures to pull that piece of shit out of office. And then immediately, nope. Ha, ha, I can't win. touch me. Ha, ha, ha. Man, that's... Can't catch me. The greased up deaf guy. Well, when you, when you, you know... Like they say, when you when you take a shot at the king, make sure you don't miss. Yeah, apparently. Speaking of which, uh, that thought left my head. It had something to do with the fucking presidential election. Well, I, I have I have something to talk about. Um, okay. I was watching Donut Operator again last night, <laughs> and this time is that, it, a, is that a typical Sunday for you? Sometimes, yeah. I look, I look on there. Donut <laughs> operators on. He's in my feed, so I, I end up clicking on it. And a lot of times, his videos are good. But this person was on there, and she, uh, she was pulled over for, for DUI, and um, she had all sorts of reasons. Like he's like, you need to get out of the car, and she's like, I'm socially awkward. That, and he kept calling her ma'am and she's like don't call me ma'am you're making me triggered and and she no, was she like say, no but she did say she was non-binary i think she I was indigenous yes yeah, I yeah saw the video. and um yeah several I mean, times there she was, was like all... I'm, I'm doing my best i'm doing my best stop calling me ma'am you can't you're treating you're a white person you're treating you're white me man. like a white man would treat an indigenous i'm like bitch you're whiter than he is what was it generational um what i can't remember what she said she was she was feeling you know the like generational generational discrimination or some, some shit like that yeah she was like, feeling the yeah she was like, feeling the he, hatred he of his, the white man has his finger up and he's like telling her to watch the finger and she's like you're intimidating me yeah he's like well every time you look at me and not my finger i have to start over yeah and like so just look at so the well, finger I, and he's like, do you have any physical ailment? Or like, do you like basically like, have do you, you been have, hit in the head? Yeah. Like, do you have a concussion? <laughs> are you like, are you mentally like damaged? She said, well, I had a concussion like a month ago. No, she's like, well, I have mental problems. And he's like, mental problems. Like, like what? She's like depression and I'm socially awkward. He goes, well, isn't everybody? He's like, and so am I. <laughs> oh oh really and she didn't have a response to that. no and then when all of that stuff didn't work and she was in the back of the squad car getting arrested she turned into the 
to the smug, um, condescending, you're a douchebag type talk. Oh, and, see, I yeah. I turned it off after like he was trying to arrest her, and she's like, "You can't manhandle me," and like you you're treating me like a white man treats fucking man and man and man and man. <laughs> and like, and I'm like, okay, well, she's getting arrested anyway, and I just switched videos. I was gonna, I actually thought about going to uh, the other site that he has where it's the un uh, un. Uh, edited but he had the rest of the arrest on that i wanted to oh, okay. of, but i didn't actually watch it i was gonna go to it but i didn't yeah yeah i got back to doing i actually had gone to youtube for something else and i ended up watching that yeah that i i think I'm, i want to say i watched that on facebook i'm just like cruising through and just doing whatever some of the some of the arrest ones are fucking hilarious yeah. and especially if it starts with like a i forget it had a caption on it of something like when the white man does that or something stupid and i'm like I, i'm definitely watching this one i had actually gone on there because uh sometimes when i'm when i'm playing zelda i'll do one of the shrines in it we it's a it's a puzzle you have to figure out how to do it mm. and i'm i'm sometimes i want to see what other people do because i'm I, sometimes i do it and i i come up with a way that i know other people are not doing <laughs> <laughs> and so, and i'm usually right i'm like yeah no i didn't do any of that i did something completely different sometimes i just cheat sometimes i put a balloon on my shield and i just <laughs> float up and then i'm up over the obstacle in the way but, you know i mean if it's part of the game is it cheating no it's 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 something that you're able to use stratego but i um yesterday i was playing and there's a shrine and there are two shrines where you're supposed to take this little green thing, this little stone, and take it to the shrine and, and unlock the shrine so you can go in it. So now the first one, I'm looking at the materials they had there to, to do it, and they had a spring and everything. So I tried the spring. I tried to launch it over to where it was supposed to go. Didn't go. It went over, but then it fell off. So then a new green thing pops up. So then I strap a rocket to it, and I just launch it across. <laughs> 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 so it lands over there, and I'm like, all right, perfect. So I go over there and I put it where it's supposed to be. <laughs> well, now the next one, you're way up high in the sky, and I'm looking around. And I'm like, well, how the fuck am I supposed to do this? Because what I'm supposed to take is supposed to be is I I think is directly below my island. So you can't drop it off because if you drop it off, it's just going to keep falling past it. It's not going to turn. And right. Then, but then when I was I tried something. I tried launching it over. Tried all sorts of things. I tried making a flight because most of the flying things go up. This is down below. Right. So I'm trying to find something that'll get me to fly down. Like a glider. And I did that. But you can't carry it and use your glider. Oh. So I had to use a wing with the engine. But I, I kept flying around it and I couldn't get myself to turn enough to <laughs> land on it. <laughs> so I tried to crash it on there. That didn't work. And then I noticed as I was going back up, because you have to get back up now. And uh I realized, no. It is not directly underneath. It is slightly at an angle. So I went up there, picked the thing up, and threw it, and it landed on the thing. <laughs> like, why the fuck did I spend so much time build it, trying to build these different things when all I had to do was throw it? Just kick it off the edge. I just picked it up, and boom. Oh, there it is. It didn't come back up here, so it's <laughs> down there still. And I just glided down, and I picked it up and put it where it needed to be. There you go. I'm like, I overthought it. Yeah. By a lot. But it was kind of cool building a different shit. <laughs> and I beat a, a boss in between. Just saw him. I was like, I'm frustrated. So I was like, I'm going to go fucking kill that thing. So I did. <laughs> <laughs> At least I didn't go, I'm going to go kill that thing and get killed. That would, that would have sucked. Yeah. That would have made me more pissed. That's, did I tell you I figured out what's wrong with it? No, I didn't yet. Uh, I figured out what's wrong with the F-350. Because I pulled off. The... Oh, it's made by Ford? Well, yeah, that's what Josh said too. <laughs> so I pulled the high pressure oil pump because I'm like, I'm going to do a couple things, but I'm, I just need to pull this because I don't know if it's the old style or new style or this or that or whatever. I'm going to pull it, see if I can figure out anything with it. And this is what it looks like. Huh. Uh, it's not supposed to have that, that gap at the top. That is a yeah, crack. That is a big gap. Yeah. So that, it's, it's that, cracked almost all the way around. So that high pressure oil pump with it cracked is still pumping like a thousand PSI, which is a lot. Yeah. It's supposed to get up to like 1800 or like 3000 when it's like revving, but 
like to start, it should it has to have like five fifty to start. But the O four style pump, this one, yeah, is I guess supposed to get to like fifteen hundred to actually like start well. And it's it was topping out at like a thousand, like eleven hundred. So one of the guys online's like, pretty sure your pump's bad. Like, but it's still doing this. Like it's just still starting. He goes, Right. I've had several O fours with the old style pump. Pretty sure your pump's bad. He goes, Mine all hit sixteen hundred before it starts. I'm like, fine, I'll fucking pull it. Yeah. And then saw he was that, right. Yeah, I saw that and I'm like, Oh, I am impressed. It's cracked almost all the way around the entire house. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna it's it's ready to come off. It's ready to break. Yeah, like it might have very soon blown the pump apart and internals would have been everywhere in the engine. Yeah, you don't want that. Which also would have been bad. That would have been even worse. Yeah, so now I get to spend $1,100, well, plus tax, $1,200 on a fucking pump. Damn. Because the old style was so much worse that when somebody figured out a way to make it better, that's $1,200 instead of like an 05. Yeah. A good one was like 650. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys can't just lock tight it, just fill in the call. Oh, fucking <laughs> don't tempt me. I'll JB weld the shit out of that bitch. I've done that before. Yeah. Not on a high pressure oil pump. I did it on, on the cylinder walls. I don't, I don't recommend doing that. I got some, I got some high heat. What was it? Some high heat JB weld putty. Yeah. And a paint roller with a PVC pipe so that I could evenly spread it. Taped off the entire head decking so that, like, all the, the oil and the coolant jackets wouldn't get anything in it. Mm -hmm. And then once it hardened, and I did, like, two or three layers to make sure there was enough. Once it hardened, I took a file and, like, started knocking off big chunks of the shit in the cylinder. Mm -hmm. And then... Put a cylinder hone on a drill and just sat there and honed the shit out of it for, I think it was like three days. Damn. Of probably between like 30 minutes and like two hours a day. I've done a cylinder hone, but it was on a, um, it was on a lawnmower engine, <laughs> but it's still a cylinder. That's, I did it this way. So I didn't have to take the fucking engine out. Yeah. I did it with the engine in the Jeep, with the crank still in the Jeep, with everything still in the Jeep. Because I was not taking it out. And I won because it worked. Yeah. If it didn't work, then that would make a meme. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so so I thought of it. And I'm like, I'm going to do it like this. And I'm not going to look up one thing about it online. Because I want to figure out this whole thing by myself. Mm -hmm. So I did all that. And then go look. And like, it's it's definitely like kind of hokey shit of a way to fix it. Mm -hmm. But there's guys that are like, yeah, I did that to my tractor like 17 years ago, and it's still working perfect. Nice. And this one guy is like, yeah, I did that on, what was it, like his crop dusting plane? I'm like, that. that's maybe a little less okay than I would do, because it kind of has to keep you in the air. Yeah. But, yeah, like a shitload of farm equipment. The people are like, yeah, I use that all the time on the cylinder walls. I'm like, that's okay. Well, at least, like, I came up with it myself, like, thought it all out, and, like, the whole application process, everything fucking worked. I didn't tape off well enough, so I got some uh, contaminants in, I think, one of the oil jackets, yeah. so it caused a little bit of issues and didn't idle perfectly. But if I'd have taped it a little better, it would have been perfect. Yeah. Well, now you know. Yeah. If you ever have to do it again, you're prepared. Yeah. You'll know exactly how to tape it. I definitely will not do that again, though. Okay. Unless I get the Jeep for free. Because <laughs> I think I paid a grand for the Jeep. It came with all the parts. Uh, came with almost all the parts. I think I had to spend like 150 bucks. And then, so I paid a grand, like 150, like 300 with parts and like all the materials. It's a lot to like spend on a Jeep, though. <laughs> And whatever, and then I sold it for I think like seventeen hundred because it still wasn't running perfect because yeah. of the oil jacket shit. So, but there's been times that I've bought a Jeep for a grand. It came with the parts I needed to fix it. Fixed it in two hours. It came with extra parts, so yeah. 
<clears throat> I returned some of the extra parts to O'Reilly. So I have some buddies that, that work there. And they're like, just give me store credit, bro. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to spend it anyway. They're like, okay, cool. So I got like $200 back from those parts. Nice. So now I paid $800 for the Jeep and then sold it for 2200 within two days. Nice. It was one of the quickest fucking flips I've done. What, what, what kind of Jeep was it? Uh, I want to say it was a Cherokee. Cherokee. That's what I was, it might have that's been what a, I was envisioning. It might have been a Grand Cherokee. I was envisioning some kind of charity. Cherokee. Cherokee. <laughs> charity. Jesus. <laughs> I need to learn words. <laughs> Um, but now it's just Wranglers, you know, they, they sell for quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. No, it wasn't, it wasn't one of them. I, I, I've driven a couple of Jeep Wranglers. I kind of like them. I've liked them since fucking MacGyver. I've like liked the them old, old school life. fucking, the old, old school Wranglers. And then they had to go and bastardize the pickup truck. There was a place I used to bartend at and, uh, when we'd close late at night, we would take turns on who would go out and pull up all the cars and let them warm up. And a couple of people I worked with both drove Jeeps. In Nebraska? Yeah. So um, one of the days, though, me and one of the other, one, me and the manager, we both, uh, we were both smokers and we were both out of cigarettes. So uh, he handed me the keys and I drove over to the grocery store and drove his Wrangler over there and <laughs> picked us all both up a pack of cigarettes. Yeah, it was pretty nice. Nice. It was brand new, too. I didn't wreck it or anything. There was no sad story at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good. That is good. Um, but yeah, like I, I really wish they would have kept the like when they had the the Jeep Comanche, that was the Cherokee pickup truck. It was like the the front end of the Cherokee, and then it was the pickup truck. Yeah. I really wish they'd have kept that of like go with the Cherokee style. And not the Wrangler style. Like I hate them less now than when they first came out. I, I don't mind. I, I think I don't think they're bad. I hated them when they first came out. I, know. I remember we talked hated. about it. Like I hate them a little less now, but they still could have looked so much better. Yeah, but it's Chrysler. They they have to change things. I mean, they they get rid of models all the time. Well, yeah, but they still have those, and they can yeah. change it in a better way. Sometimes they get rid of a model, and then if you have that model and you need to get car parts for it. Oh, it's a nightmare. Oh, it's a fucking nightmare. That's, I want to start a business doing all that, too, because it doesn't seem like it's that hard. Like, indus- like car parts and industrial parts, like warehouse, like to run conveyances and stuff. There's some parts that companies pay like $800, $1,000 for like one sensor that can't be more than $60 to make. Yeah. I need to start doing that. But um, it shouldn't be that difficult to find a Holly carburetor for a Dodge. But nobody could get the, the carburetor I needed for my Dodge. Well, it depends. So with the correct mounting setup, you can yeah. do any. But because Hollies and Edelbrocks were both designed for Chevy, you have to have a mounting plate for a Dodge. Well, this one specifically came with that that Holly, and it just it was ended up being a pain in the ass. Uh, and you don't, I ended up getting somebody who put two different carburetors together to give me mine. You don't want a Holly anyway; it leaks fuel through it. Well, but that that's what I don't. I, I at the time I didn't know. I just uh, wanted my car to run. Yeah. I wanted to be able to go up a hill and not have to have a running start <laughs> to get going. I just that's all I wanted. Yeah, that's a that's a fair yeah, that's a fair thing <laughs> to want. <laughs> Yeah, if I didn't get a running start, uh, it, it took me a while to get up that hill. But yeah, I think I had a Holly 900 in that silver truck that I had in Vegas. Yeah. In the 440. And it would often, like, I know I could rebuild it, but it was a famous issue with those of it would leak all the fuel out of the floats, out of the bowls, into the, uh, like, into the intake. Yeah. So, like, it would often have hot start issues because... Like it's it's warm and it ran, but now that it's shut off and there's all this fuel in here, mm-hmm. now it all just leaked out and it's basically acting flooded. Mine in the winter, if I try to start it and I try to move right away, nope. It would just be like no, it would shut off and then it took a while to even get it started again. I'd have to <laughs> let it sit there for a while before I could even get get move without it just dying. It sounds like plugged secondaries. It was a whole lot of problems. Yeah, I, I did not miss. I don't that like car. carburetors. When that car um. 
when that car eventually, uh, when the brakes went out, that was the last straw. That's when I got rid of it. I would imagine that's when a lot of people get rid of a car as if the brakes don't work. Yeah. Well, I step out of it and let it go off the cliff. When it just, when it, you just, you just had more on top of more. And, and it's like, after a while, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm not dealing with this anymore. I'm not going to try to get all of these things fixed. It's just not worth it. Yeah. That's like when I sell the bike that's in the garage, I'm never buying a carbureted bike again. They're such a pain in the ass. Like I just paid to have the carburetor rebuilt and it's already gummed up. Damn. So the secondaries are sticking. So if you try to rev it too soon after starting it, it dies. And then if you let it warm up and then you start riding it around, like when you come up to a stop sign, you hold the clutch in, the throttle will stick just because it can't fucking filter back down. See, mine would do that too. If I, if I actually, if Stuck I put secondaries, it, if I, if I actually put it to the floor to try to get it to go up that hill that I yeah. was talking about, yeah, it would just stick. Yeah. That's... And I'd have to get out and I'd have to unstick it. Yep. I didn't like doing that. Yep. That's because it's stuck secondaries inside the carburetor. Yeah. That's why I know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but I had to get out and actually manually unstick it. Yeah. No, this one, you just like feather the clutch and it'll like eventually go down. Yeah. Like, this, yeah you burn the clutch out a little bit, but whatever. Well, this was a, a man, this was an automatic. So there was no. No, oh, yeah, you definitely can't. <laughs> I mean, you could like neutral drive pop it. But yeah, but I, I, have, I always got it done. Yeah. It, it, that was, a, that was a nightmare car, but it was Dodge. So it's kind of what I expect. <laughs> <laughs> I like Dodges. I, I, there's a couple of them I actually do like. Um, I've mentioned before, I like the Charger. I've driven a couple, but I didn't drive them for an extended period of time, so I don't know. I, I drove them across town and to other places, but. Yeah. yeah they weren't, uh, well, it's, and I, they did have, like, even the base model had 300 horse, so that was yeah. pre- pretty nice. I th- oh, you're talking about newer, newer. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. They yeah, all have um, transmission issues. Yeah, a friend of mine like, in high school. As much as I love Dodge, the new shit has really bad transmission problems. Oh, I know. Uh, the Dart, I and remember. The, the V6s are awful in the Chevy and the Dodge because they were trying to make it so economical and they didn't really pay attention to like the, the design flaws of a lot of different stuff. So the timing chain tensioner is fully plastic if i remember right from yeah. the, the charger that i did or yeah. the 300c thankfully it didn't like because i think it's an interference motor but as soon as the timing chain snapped on the one that i did it just stopped and they were never able to get it to do anything again damn so i replaced the timing chain and it fired right up nice which is like super super rare but um, you see, when I was, it's funny you mentioned the the Chrysler 300 C. Um, I when I was selling cars, and I did not study the Chrysler 300 C because that was not one of our cars. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm doing all the courses and I'm learning about all the cars. So because you know somebody comes up to me and asks me a question about a car, I want to be able to say, well, it's got this, this, and this. Yeah. So um, we're having this uh, pre shipped meeting and. We're looking at all the used cars a lot, and one of the car managers looks at me and says, okay, so what's the difference between the Chrysler C and the non-C? I'm like, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> and he says to me, the Chrysler C has a Hemi, which it turns out, no, that's not true. No, it's not. Yeah, there's Chrysler Cs without a Hemi. Yeah, so, no, it's it's like the comfort package. So eat a dick Yeah, that's, and try to make me look stupid. It's been a while since you've said that on here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it used to be a regular thing. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the comfort package. Yeah, that's what I was. I learned that later. But I was like, that's kind of what I thought when I said it. But, but no, like when I drove one across town one day, and it yeah. had a, uh, uh, the cup holder could be heated or cooled. Yeah, um, that's comfort. <laughs> that's <laughs> nice. I've actually been in a couple uh, Chrysler 300s. I thought they're pretty nice. They are. My brother wants one. They're so comfortable. He wants. He wants one of the. Was it the uh, the RTs, the SRTs? Yeah. The like 6.4? Yeah, that is GSR. Yeah. Yeah. Those are nice. Did you say GSR? No, I said SRT. Oh. No, I didn't say GSR. Are you sure? Roll it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah I've, people, I've only been a GSR people once People still ever. want fucking gold for those things, though. Like, 
20 or 30 grand still for like a 2013, 2014. No, thanks. 300 SRT. I wonder what some of the old ones from, uh, from Vegas when they had the, the Tobin Dodge, they had the, um, the chopper edition. Like when you used to see it on TV, they had a chopper edition and they put what they called Lambo doors on it. Oh yeah. And they show you the, the Chrysler 300 with Lambo doors. They probably threw all those away because they're pieces of shit. Yeah. There was actually a car sold by that lot. It was a, uh, a challenger and, um, the challenger, I don't know if you know this, but they don't have convertibles. No. But this guy bought one and had it made into a convertible. It cost as much to make the thing as convertible as it did to buy the car. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. yeah, I saw a picture of it in the actual dealership. That's I'm actually working on a convertible right now. A friend of mine has a an an early eighties Mustang. Nice. That he doesn't want Ford problems anymore. So he's L S swapping it. And by he's L S swapping it, I mean I'm L S swapping it. He's paying me to do it. Um, so he's doing LS1 T56 manual trans and a Ford 8.8 rear end. Nice. So just got the new rear end in. Got the old axles out because they have the ABS rings. He's not going to have ABS because it's old. And I need new lug nuts before I can do the, the lug studs on the new axles before I install those. So I'm going to stopping point until I get back from... I'm going to Oklahoma to visit my grandparents. Yep. Leaving tomorrow. Are you going to Mars? What? <laughs> <laughs> Oklahoma is a lot like the service of Mars, so you're going to Mars. I, I don't know about that. There's, there's lot, parts of it, yeah. A lot of corn there. Yeah. A lot of fields. I don't know if there's fields on Mars. Well, I don't know if you ever watched The Martian. They grow a lot of potatoes up there. <laughs> hey, he grows, well, yeah, for a little bit. Shit potatoes. Yeah. Potatoes nonetheless. Yeah. yeah. That's actually a really good movie. I enjoyed it very much. I think I was almost asleep during the whole movie. Like, well, I watch remember it, watch certain, it when you're awake. Sometime. I remember certain parts, but definitely not all of it. Watch it when you're awake sometime. It's a good movie. Maybe. Um, I talked about this at work. Uh, the Drop is a great movie. Tom Hardy and James Gandolfini. Yep. I think it was like 2013, 2014. Great fucking movie. Too old. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, I also watched a movie called The Pyramid, which is like, it's like a Wish.com mummy. It's actually fucking, it was enjoyable. Yeah. It was like 2013 or 2014. They find, they find this pyramid. Uh, it's like 250 miles from Giza, buried in the desert, like buried, buried. So they're like excavating this pyramid and they find a tunnel system that's already in place that's been blocked by like massive boulders yeah. to get into the pyramid. And then while that's happening, there's like an uprising in, in Giza and, and like Egypt's in shambles for whatever reason. And they're like, everybody has to leave. We're evacuating. Hide in the pyramid. Yeah. So, well, they're like, well, so they put in a Rover. They borrowed a Rover from NASA to go explore and whatever because toxic air because it's 5,000 fucking years old, whatever. But you can just borrow one? It was on loan because they were, it was a, well, I'm just saying we a could, paid dig. We could, we could use a rover. Yeah. And NASA? Just, I'll we, just part could, it out. Can we borrow one? We, we, put it, put it in Mike's name. I'll put, I will not part it out. <laughs> we, we, need, <laughs> we need it to do content. Um, but yeah. So they, they sent that in and there's some creatures that you see like briefly on the camera and it's like, what's that? And like, Oh, it must be one of the dogs got in because the entrance was unguarded. And then the Rover gets like thrashed Damn. and like the camera feed dies and the backup camera feed dies. And they're like, well, we so, have to go in. Those are expensive. Yeah. Cause it was like a $3 million Rover. They're like, well, we have to go in just for the Rover. And, like, $3 million must have been used. Well, obviously. Yeah. So they go in, uh, they go in to find it and end up getting trapped inside, obviously, yeah. <clears throat> and have to get out. So the creatures that they saw were not the dogs that got in. They were like underworld, like the, the guardians of the afterlife cats. Yeah. Like whatever the fuck those are. So like yeah, dog, dog ish, but very, but, very, very cat. Yeah. 
Yeah, they they liked cats back then. Yeah. And then it ends up there's a whole lot of other like lore that they tie in with like what that pyramid was used for, why it was buried in the first place, and why the tunnel system that was put in after was blocked also. So the thing I'm wondering is once the rover broke down, didn't any of them have AAA? They could have just sent in somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. But so like the acting's the acting's corny and yeah. and fairly bad because it's it's definitely like a B or C movie. But if it has a good story, that wouldn't be bad. Yeah, no, it was it was pretty good. It was but, pretty enjoyable. And the re, like the reason the reason that the pyramid was buried, the reason that it was blocked in again, because the tunnel system they found out was built by like the Freemasons in the year like thirteen hundred. Yeah. Or like 1800, some shit. They were probably like, you know, we should probably block this off. We don't think you want to go in there. Well, and they found they found a dead Freemason later with a notepad of like, I think I found the exit in his notepad. Mm-hmm. And clearly, like that was the last entry. Like, I think I found the exit here. And now he's laying dead next to the sarcophagus. So no, he did not. No. Or he might have. He might have, but he decided to go he, back and he, he forgot he, something. He didn't make it to it. Oh, all right. I thought maybe. Because oh shit! I forgot my pen. But... See, so I'm not. I'm not ruining the main part of the whole thing that they yeah. don't talk about the whole time. But like, there's there's some there's a reason that they reburied it, and it's a fucking dope reason. Nice. And they let it free at the end of the movie because they're dumb. So, I think you should watch it. It's on Max. I have to look for it. Um. I think I I think I've run across it because I was looking through the different types of movies on there. I was looking through horror movies specifically. Yeah, it, it says it's a thriller, but it's eh. Speaking of a horror, I can't remember if I mentioned this last week. There was a The Nun too. No, I, I mentioned that. <laughs> I watched that. It wasn't as good as the first Nun. The Nun was great. Nun two, they um, it was none too good. But um, uh huh. They they had this movie. It's called <laughs> it was called The Big Shave. I'm like, well, what the fuck is this? Shave. Yeah. Okay. The way he's standing at the mirror, though, you might be thinking he's shaving something else. But no, he's shaving his face. It was made in 1967. It's a six-minute movie. What? Yeah. Is it just... No, he's, but no, he shaves. He's using like an old-style razor. It's not like a, a yeah. current Gillette because it was 1967. Yeah, so it's a shaves. straight edge. He shaves, and, and then he puts water on, and he shaves again. And then... um. He's just bleeding, just ble- blood dripping down. And at one point, he goes across his neck, and all this blood's coming down. It's dripping in the sink. And I, like I said, it was only six minutes. And um, I still fast-forwarded through parts of it. It was just stupid. So I was curious because I'm like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, I don't, I don't know why Max has it on there. Six minutes of this guy just fucking shaving and cutting up his face. So It's French or some shit, too. Uh, well, that's, you could have started with that, and I'd have stopped listening a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I wanted you to hear it. So I'm not going to say Christ. <laughs> but it's really called the big shave. I, at first, like I said, he's standing in front of the mirror, and the way he's looking down, I'm like, wait, is he going to shave what I think he's going to No, he shaved his face. He's sitting there with no shirt on, so he's not shaving his chest. He's not shaving his balls. He's just shaving his face and cutting it up. And it's listed under horror. Uh. I guess they don't have snorer as a category. Yeah. Like, I mean, from how you described it, it's almost a self snuff film. Yeah. It, it is. This is fucking borderline. Yeah. I, I didn't understand what was going on. I, but I guess I just saw the name and I was like, what is this? And I thought it was only six minutes. So, but still, it didn't captivate me long enough to watch a full six minutes. Was it, was it like actual, like, decent? footage no, though or was, it was it like it was like if you were in your bathroom with a with a well, bad no, no no not not like good or bad footage that way but like think of think of like workplace safety videos that were like filmed in the oh, 60s was and like 70s. That. oh jesus yeah like don't don't be like terry but they didn't have any and words like terry not, and, not... well no but like the don't be like terry and fuck stick your arm and just, <laughs> and just like blood gushing and fucking just like fake as shit some of the current um, safety videos I saw were kind of, kind of gruesome. Yeah, they need to be. I then, saw then people just remember them. Completely skewered with rebar. Yeah. Yeah, that was. That's, have you seen that video? The, the dude on the construction site that's skewered with rebar, and his friend <laughs> passed out, and he called the ambulance. And the dude's happy as shit. And he's like, "Yeah, like I was telling him this. 
I look up. Somebody's yelling, hey, watch out. I look up. Whoosh, six foot of rebar right through me. He goes, so I say, oh, that's crazy. I look, and I'm like, hey, Kyle, come look. Kyle comes over, looks at me, passes the <laughs> fuck out. That's why I called you guys. He's talking to the ambulance. I'm like, sir, I don't think you realize. He goes, did I have rebar inside of me? Yeah, I know. The city owns this building. It's a payday. <laughs> wow. Yeah, but yeah, but the city is gonna re, is gonna want to confiscate that rebar. <laughs> They're gonna want that back. <laughs> yeah, but that that would be a good fucking payday for sure. Oh yeah. Um, but I've seen other ones. Um, I saw one where it was a picture. I think it was where it was a hand and a meat grinder, and there's a ways in there, and there's stuff coming out the front. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure there's there's been plenty of sausages that have been eaten that have at least part of a finger in it. Yeah. And they're like, I don't know which one it is, so they just pack it up and ship it out. I thought it was interesting when somebody was trying to um, scam Wendy's, and it was somebody oh, the who, finger in the chili. Yeah, but the person who had found the who had the finger and put it in the chili to find it was in Sacramento. In the Sacramento area, I was in, I happened to be in the Sacramento area when it happened, and uh, he are decided you, to take are this you finger. This was you? No, no, because he took the finger to Vegas to a Wendy's that I used to go to regularly, and put in his chili at my Wendy's. I'm like, what the fuck? This this is lining up a little weird, <laughs> Mike. <laughs> no, that guy got I caught. You, I know you like sending emails. That guy got caught, and he got in a lot of trouble. Yeah, huh. I do like sending emails. To, I, I did have an interesting experience last week. With a f- finger in your... <laughs> no. Oh, okay, okay. Just, <laughs> no, just and, checking. And I, didn't, I, I don't buy chili, first of all. I just don't. So they put beans in it. We talked about beans oh, in chili God. last week. Yes. Um, so uh, I, I, I did have an experience with, with Popeye's when I left here. They completely left out two sides. I, I, I had two dinners, so it came with one side per dinner. And I got mac and cheese for both of them. Well, I asked for mac and cheese for both of them. I got neither. And then the, the food wasn't very fresh. So I let them know. And they're like, well, you've had a few problems. So we're going to investigate this. And I get an email telling me, um, we're still looking into this. Christ. So I responded. I'm like, is it my fault that the previous visit to Popeye's, you didn't have a truck? You were out of butter. You were out of mac and cheese. You were out of chicken nuggets. Is this my fault? And I was like, is this my fault that he didn't give me my two side dishes? Very next email. We have credited your account with this much money and, <laughs> and refunded this. Um, check your emails real quick. You should have the, the email for your the Golden Knights tickets. Check. Um, uh, in like 20 minutes. Um, yeah, so Mike's going to Golden Knights game. Supposed to be this weekend? Yeah. 25th i think yeah i don't see anything yet but uh um i did want to go over a couple things real quick yeah i was watching um another video on youtube brandon herrera the ak guy he was recreating the um the the uh assassination shot of mlk and uh and the angle and everything and where it was from and who shot and Mm mm-hmm and apparently he was talking about the, the conspiracy, which I, I'm not as familiar with that conspiracy as I am about some I'm, of the others. I'm not either, but it was basically the CIA that killed him. Well, uh, they, they, they were saying the FBI in this. Uh, yeah. Allegedly. The same fuck. I, I know that the FBI, if they're listening, we know that you would not do anything like this. So Yeah, and the CIA doesn't operate in the States either. Yeah, yeah we know that. So so don't need to look into us. We, we're, we're on board. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently, like, they, they looked at the... At, they compared the... the barrel to the to the round that was shot into him mm-hmm. and apparently the it did not match up like the 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 rifling the rifling the rate all of that did not and then uh, apparently when the police were at the at the motel or hotel across the street holiday inn whatever it was the motel hotel holiday inn <laughs> Well, um, if they were feeling smart, they stayed at the Holiday Inn Express. <laughs> but they, um, apparently the police, in the middle of the night, because the window that he was supposed to shoot out of, apparently had a large tree branch in between him and the target. So while investigating, apparently the police went over, 
to cut down that branch to aid in the investigation of the shooting. Wait, say that again. What? So he's shooting from from across the street, from yeah. the window. Apparently, there was a tree branch growing in front of that window. But while investigating the shooting, the police, in the middle of the night, went and cut down that branch to aid in their investigation, is what they said. So the shooting had already happened yeah. when the tree branch was cut down. Yeah. And they did it in the middle of the night. Like, so... I'm even more confused now. So, yeah, so it makes so it seem MLK, to me like MLK that, was already dead. Yeah. And then they cut the branch the, down. Yeah. To because you know, frame I mean, somebody else. Basically is what it looks like. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, Cause like the twist rate on the bullet was wrong. Everything was wrong. And then they cut that down, which it would have been a hell of a shot to be able to shoot a bullet through a tree branch to hit somebody in the, in the chin and then down into his neck. I mean, depending on how big the tree branch is, like if if it's just like past the leaves, like it's fine. Yeah, but no, apparently it was a good sized branch, and yeah. Huh. But even I mean, to be able to see through those leaves. Yeah, I don't. And I don't. Get a, but he also did, like I said, it hit it hit the chin and ricocheted down through the 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 neck. I don't know that I've ever really read much about the conspiracy. I know like I. A, I know I a not... lot of people have have said like it was the FBI, CIA, like somebody, but, like. Somebody like a governmental organization. Pretty much, if anything happens, it, it, oh, yeah. there's a conspiracy theory out there somewhere for it. But probably. I mean, pretty much everything. I mean, people. It's it's a movie, and people are still discussing whether Han shot first. Yeah. And he, people, people people are upset that he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, but. And then that's fucking Disney, bro. Disney edited it so he didn't. If you go watch it again right now on Disney Plus, yeah. Greedo shoots first. Yeah. By like the split second. But Greedo shoots first yeah. on the Disney fight version. Um, I'm selling VHS trilogies. I think I have like three of them. That's if anybody wants to see uh what actually happened. But we're at hour seven. If I had a VHS player, I'd be I'd be interested. I'll find one of them for you too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we can we can wrap up so we can schedule up a couple of fucking videos to post to and figure out how the schedule and shit goes and if we want to type shit out about it. So now know. that we're not recording on that, I don't see how much time it's at from here. Oh, that's what you used? That's what I used with that. Can you read those those numbers or is it too small? I can read them. I just that's what I was oh, used okay. to looking yeah. at. Because no, that's in my that's in my direction. Yeah. That's what I've always looked at. I mean I'm also facing that way, but Yeah. Yeah, so uh, follow follow us on uh, Facebook and Instagram at Some Offense Intended. Uh, X Twitter, Some Offense Pod. I think TikTok is Some Offense Intended. I'd have to look that up. I think up. so. I'd have to double check. It's yeah. been a while. It's been a long time. Um, we will be probably scheduling the next couple of days of uh, real drops. Yes. After we hit stop recording. Uh, when you see those pop up, give us a like, share, subscribe to the channel, YouTube. Oh yeah. YouTube. Some offense attended. Uh, if you haven't yet subscribe on iTunes or Spotify or whatever you listen on and leave us a review and drink Dr. Pepper. They're not paying us yet. Uh, <laughs> drink some peanut butter milk stout. That's great. Yes, it really is. And, uh, we'll see you next week. Goodbye.